Good evening and Merry Christmas. Our opening song is number 357, which happens to be, O Come All Ye Faithful. We are going to sing verses 1, 3, and 4. Good evening. Good evening. In the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. With Let us call to mind our sins and prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will.
Let us pray. O God, who gladden us year by year, as we wait in hope for our redemption, grant that just as we joyfully welcome your only begotten Son as our Redeemer, we may also merit to face him confidently when he comes again as our Judge. This remains with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. For Zion's sake, I will not be silent. For Jerusalem's sake, I will not be quiet. Until her vindication shines forth like the dawn, and her victory like a burning torch. Nations shall behold your vindication, and all the kings your glory. You shall be called by a new name, pronounced by the mouth of the Lord. You shall be a glorious crown in the hand of the Lord, a royal diadem held by your God. No more shall people call you forsaken or your land desolate, but you shall be called my delight and your land espoused. For the Lord delights in you and makes your land his spouse. As a young man marries a virgin, your builder shall marry you. And as a bridegroom rejoices in his bride, so shall your God rejoice in you. The word of the Lord. I have a 
made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to David, my servant. Forever will I confirm your prosperity and establish your throne for all generations. Blessed the people who know the joyful shout. In the light of your countenance, O Lord, they walk. At your name they rejoice all the day. And through your justice they are exalted. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Paul reached Antioch in Pisidia and entered the synagogue, he stood up, motioned with his hand, and said, Fellow Israelites and you others who are God-fearing, listen. The God of this people Israel chose our ancestors and exalted the people during their sojourn in the land of Egypt. With uplifted arm, he led them out of it. Then he removed Saul and raised up David as king. Of him he testified, I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will carry out my every wish. From this man's descendants, God, according to his promise, has brought to Israel a Savior, Jesus. John heralded his coming by proclaiming a baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. And as John was completing his course, he would say, What do you suppose that I am? I am not he. Behold, one is coming after me. I am not worthy to unfasten the sandals of his feet. The word of the Lord. with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. The book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, 
the son of Abraham. Abraham became the father of Isaac. Isaac, the father of Jacob. Jacob, the father of Judah and his brothers. Judah became the father of Perez and Zariah, whose mother was Tamar. Perez became the father of Hezron. Hezron, the father of Ram. Ram, the father of Amemdah. Amemdah became the father of Nasson. Nasson became the father of Solomon. Solomon, the father of Boaz, whose mother was Rahab. Boaz became the father of Obed, whose mother was Ruth. Obed became the father of Jesse. Jesse, the father of David, the king. David became the father of Solomon, whose mother had been the wife of Uriah. Solomon became the father of Rehoboam. Rehoboam, the father of Abjah. Abjah became the father of Asphod. Asphod, the father of Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat, the father of Joram. Joram, the father of Uzziah. Uzziah became the father of Jotham. Jotham, the father of Ahaz. Ahaz, the father of Hezekiah. Hezekiah became the father of Manasseh. Manasseh, the father of Amos. Amos, the father of Josiah. Josiah became the father of Jochamim and his brothers at the time of the Babylonian exile. After the Babylonian exile, Jochamim became the father of Shealtiel. Shealtiel became the father of Jerobabel. Jerobabel became the father of Ab Abudad. Abudad became the father of Eliakim. Eliakim, the father of Azar. Zadok became the father of Echim. Achim, the father of Ulid. Uliad, the father of Eleazar. Eleazar became the father of Mathen. Mathen, the father of Jacob. Jacob, the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary. Of her was born Jesus, who is called the Christ. Thus, the total number of generations from Abraham to David is 14 generations. From David to the Babylonian exile, 14 generations. From the Babylonian exile to Christ, 14 generations. Now this is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about, when his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph. But before they lived together, she was found with child to the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, since he was a righteous man, yet unwilling to expose her to, his, her, to shame, decided to divorce her quietly. Such was his intention when, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home. For it is through the Holy Spirit that this child has been conceived in her. She shall bear a son, and he will be named Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke, he did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took his wife into his home. He had no relations with her until she bore a son, and he named him Jesus, the Gospel of the Lord. Hello. <coughs> Merry Christmas. Just to all those who I haven't met, guests or people who I haven't met yet, I'm Father Brandon, came here in July. Um, those who do know me, I'm still here, so Merry Christmas. No Christmas surprise for you. So we come here tonight to celebrate Christmas, and um, oh yeah, yeah, it's my other joke. <laughs> I, I, uh, before I left Clearfield, I, uh, I, uh, I bought a Christmas vestment because the, the one I used on there was beautiful but it belonged to the parish. So I ordered one online and that's what this is. I said, that's really nice. When I came in the mail, it looks like grandma's curtains. <laughs> or a tablecloth. I don't know. But it has character, so it's mine. Anyways, grandma's curtains, they're always festive. Anyways, we celebrate Christmas here uh, this evening. And, and we got to think about it um, in one way. There's a lot of ways to talk, think about Christmas. One way you just kind of just, just take away 
from the readings tonight, or just the idea of Christmas, that Christmas can't be just the retelling of a story of a baby that's born in Bethlehem 2,000 years ago. Like, if that's all that is just a, a story, then it really doesn't serve a real purpose. It doesn't really do anything for us. It's just a story. And it's kind of just, you know, blah, you know? So, so if that's all it is, like, it's not going to really do anything for us in our spiritual lives or our path of salvation. This past Advent, we, we, we looked at uh, those four weeks about the idea that we are limited. We looked at John the Baptist and Joseph. And John the Baptist and Joseph both had real human earthly limitations. They had weak flesh. They had doubt. They didn't understand the plan. They lacked a vision. They had to be spoken to in dreams. They had to flee into the wilderness. They couldn't do it on their own. And both of them just needed to have just utter faith and trust that somehow it will work out because they're weak and they were limited. So we come to Christmas this weekend, tonight, and we have this expectation that Christmas should be something. It should be something where we are, you know, where we're, we're happy, we're joyful, we're gleeful, full of hope and peace and love and joy. But all of us bring to this evening things that limit us, things that keep us from experiencing that. You know, Joseph and the Baptists had their, had their own things. But maybe our thing is that every Christmas we, we think about, you know, all those family members who have, who, have, who, have, 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 who have gone. You know, all those years and years and years of relatives and parents and uncles and aunts and cousins. and They're, they're, they're gone. And maybe that brings a lot of sadness and, and hollowness to our hearts. Maybe it's just a sense of just being overwhelmed and not being able to really, you know, um, grasp God in just the, the chaos of life. Maybe it's just a sin. You wish you could just get over this sin. Whatever it might be, we all come here tonight with something limiting our Christmas joy, something limiting what God, what, experiencing the fullness of what we want Christmas to be. So we look at the baby Jesus then. We say, baby Jesus, if I'm being limited, if I can't fully have what I want, what are you going to do about it? And we look at that infant in the womb, infant in the, in the manger, and the God of the universe, who looks down over all creation, looks up at the faces of his mommy and daddy. The hands that created all time and space is gripping the finger of his mom. And will one day be used to win salvation when he slays the enemy. The one whom angels and, and, and archangels and myriads and, and hosts adore day and night is just in a cave with a couple of shepherds. And so we look at this baby and realize that if that's all he is, what's he going to do? But we realize that this God of the universe, in this moment of his birth, is the warrior, is the one that will come to earth to win us back and to rescue us and to save us. Save us from all that limits us. Save us from all that, all that holds us back. That he will come and slay the enemy. And all those things that hold us back, all those things that we hold in our hearts and our minds, he will come to rescue us from those things. Because he is the warrior. He is the Messiah. And his, and his weapon isn't an army or a military. It's love. Because the love of the Father is all that he needs. And so may you and I, in our own desire to have the fullness of the joy of Christmas, look at the face of this baby Jesus and just adore the God of the universe who is utterly vulnerable and who comes to earth with no protection, no army, no military, just a love beyond all telling. And that love will be his weaponry. That love will be what he slays the enemy with. That love is what we will, we will be drawn into as we flee into that wilderness to cling on to him. And so may we look to that baby Jesus not just as a story and a kid, but as that warrior, that Messiah who comes to earth 
to save us and win us back. I love you. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Present now our prayers to our Heavenly Father. The response is sung. For the Holy Father and the bishops who assist him, that their life, teaching, preaching, and pastoral care will proclaim the saving trust of the Incarnation to all. We pray to the Lord. For our country, and those who lead it, that true freedom and justice may reign. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For lasting peace throughout the world, that the coming of the Prince of Peace will put an end to all division and unify the people of the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all Christians, that they may respond to the universal call to holiness by living their faith with great fervor. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the safety of those in the military and for police officers, firefighters, and all first responders, may they be protected by the intercession of St. Michael the Archangel. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick may be comforted and healed and that those who have died may share the joys of heaven. We pray especially for the people of the parish for whom this mass is being offered and for Dorothy Hoovler, Sister Phyllis McDonald and Miss Freya Dominicus, mother of Ellie McIntosh, who died this week, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Please pause now and add your own personal intentions. We pray to the Lord. Heavenly God, we come before you this evening with great faith, knowing you hear and answer our prayer according to your will. May we, in our recognition of our, all of our limitedness and brokenness and woundedness and grief and hurt, lost out darkness, that you come to slay all of that as the Prince of Peace. May we realize that we are so helpless that we need a baby to win us back and to save us and to fight this battle. May we cling to you, draw ever nearer deeply towards you, and in that come to know the joy of life with you forever. And we ask all of these things through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we look forward, O oh Lord, to the coming festivities, may we serve you all the more eagerly for knowing that in them you make manifest the beginnings of our redemption through Christ our Lord. And the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through him, the holy exchange that restores our life has shone forth today in splendor. Where now our frailty is assumed by your word, not only does human morality, mortality receive unending honor, but by this wondrous union, we too are made eternal. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with great joy we proclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord, Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, to be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. This bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Lawrence our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we have the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but in the faith of your church, and grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord will be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him, who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed is called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Our song for communion is number 371, Silent Night, Holy Night.
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray that we may draw new vigor from celebrating the nativity of your only begotten Son, by whose heavenly mystery we receive both food and drink, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Lord be with you. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May the Lord God of infinite goodness, who by the incarnation of his Son has driven darkness from the world and by that glorious birth has illumined this most holy night, drive far from you the darkness of vice and illumine your hearts with the virtue, with the light of virtue. Amen. Amen. May God who willed that the great joy of his Son's birth be announced to shepherds by an angel, fill your minds with the gladness he gives and make you heralds of his holy gospel. Amen. Amen. And may God who by the incarnation brought together the earthly and heavenly realm fill you with the gift of his peace and favor and make you sharers with the church in heaven. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you, remain with you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Glorify the Lord by your life. Thanks be to you. Have a super duper Christmas. Hope Santa's good to you. Our closing song is number 353, Joy to the World. We'll sing verse 1, 2, and 4. Let heaven and nature sing, let heaven and nature sing, let heaven and nature sing. 